Hormones influence target cells by binding to specific receptors. The hormone receptor interaction initiates the process of transforming the chemical message into the response of the cell. Your goals for learning are to learn about hormone receptors, to describe common second messenger systems and transcription factors, to review insulin, to understand that hormones induce changes in cellular metabolism. Here's what you need to know. That changing the shape of a molecule can activate or inactivate it. The terminology of carbohydrate, lipid, and protein metabolism. The difference between absorptive and post-absorptive states of the body. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. To review what you have already learned about insulin and to expand your knowledge and understanding of it, click an image. Insulin controls metabolic activity in the feasting or absorptive state that occurs during and immediately following a meal. The rise in plasma glucose levels stimulate pancreatic beta cells to secrete insulin. Rising blood levels of other nutrients, like amino acids, also stimulate insulin secretion. When blood glucose levels fall below normal in the fasting or post-absorptive state that occurs well after a meal, insulin secretion is inhibited. Hormones of the GI tract, particularly glucose-dependent insulinotropic peptide, or GIP, and parasympathetic nerves also stimulate secretion of insulin. Negative feedback from insulin to the beta cells keeps the supply of glucose to the tissues relatively constant. This negative feedback system can be overruled by action of hormones or the autonomic nervous system, for example, when sympathetic nerves inhibit secretion of insulin. Remember that insulin is water-soluble and is transported in the bloodstream as dissolved particles. Dissolved particles are readily broken down, therefore insulin has a short half-life. The water-soluble insulin molecules bind to tyrosine kinase receptors on the cell surface. Once activated, the insulin receptor complex phosphorylates many proteins that alter many metabolic pathways. Insulin is synthesized in the pancreas in islet beta cells. The initial large pre-prohormone produced in the rough ER is cleaved into a prohormone and shuttled to the Golgi apparatus for processing. The prohormone is packaged into storage vesicles where it is converted to the active hormone insulin. Vesicles amass quantities of insulin for rapid release. Insulin is the major controller of fuel metabolism and is also essential for growth. We will examine the metabolic effects of insulin first, dividing them into effects on carbohydrates, protein, and lipids, then examine the growth effects. Insulin facilitates glucose transport into most cells by stimulating the insertion of insulin-dependent glucose transporters into cell membranes. Brain and liver are freely permeable to glucose at all times through transporters that do not depend on insulin. Insulin stimulates glycogen production and inhibits glycogen breakdown in liver and skeletal muscle. Insulin inhibits synthesis of glucose from amino acids and glycerol in the liver. All of these actions decrease plasma glucose levels. Insulin facilitates transport of amino acids into muscle and other tissues. Insulin stimulates protein synthesis and inhibits protein degradation. 
failure to inhibit protein degradation is responsible in part for weight loss and protein wasting associated with untreated diabetes mellitus. Under the influence of insulin, the increased glucose in adipose cells is converted to fatty acids and glycerol, the molecules necessary for synthesizing triglycerides. Insulin promotes the synthesis of triglycerides and inhibits their breakdown. Triglycerides are storage molecules for both fat and glucose. To understand the control of metabolic processes during both the absorptive state and the post-absorptive state, we need to examine the functions of another hormone, glucagon, an insulin antagonist. Glucagon drives the catabolic activity of the post-absorptive period in response to declining plasma glucose. Glucagon stimulates glycogen breakdown and inhibits its production and stimulates glucose synthesis in the liver. All of these actions increase plasma glucose levels. Glucagon also promotes the breakdown of triglycerides and the degradation of proteins. I promote storage of nutrients. I make nutrients available. I decrease plasma glucose levels. I increase plasma glucose levels. I, anything you can do, I do the opposite. A second major function of insulin is its effect on growth. Insulin is the growth-promoting hormone during fetal development and is required for normal postnatal growth. Its exact role in postnatal growth is not fully known, but inhibiting protein degradation is of great importance. It is also required for the production of insulin-like growth factors, or IGFs. In summary, insulin affects both metabolism and growth. It shifts the body to anabolic metabolism during the absorptive state. Insulin stimulates transport of nutrient molecules into cells and production of fuel storage molecules and protein synthesis. These anabolic processes ensure that there will be a supply of nutrients for the post-absorptive period. Insulin is the growth-promoting hormone during fetal development and is required for normal postnatal growth. Bound to its receptors, insulin enters cells by receptor-mediated endocytosis. Once inside, insulin is broken down by an enzyme system present in liver, muscle, kidney, and other tissues. Insulin receptors can be recycled to the plasma membrane. This occurrence down-regulates insulin receptors and could account for the decreased insulin sensitivity of some cells to chronically high insulin levels. One way that scientists learn about the endocrine system is to observe the symptoms of patients who suffer from diseases that alter hormone secretion. Diabetes mellitus, the most common disorder of the endocrine system, results from a failure of insulin to direct the metabolic effects of the absorptive state. Click the liver to continue. There are two types of diabetes mellitus, often simply called diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, previously known as juvenile onset or insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus, is characterized by insulin deficiency or absence. Type 2 diabetes, previously known as adult onset or non-insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus, is characterized by normal or elevated insulin levels but resistance of target cells to the actions of insulin. In the absence of insulin, or when target cells are resistant to the effect of insulin, glucose cannot be transported into cells. Recall the metabolic functions associated with insulin and answer questions to complete a flowchart that describes the signs, symptoms, and effects of diabetes.
Here's a summary of what we've covered. Hormone receptors are proteins located in the plasma membrane or the interior of the cell. Water-soluble hormones bind to plasma membrane receptors, and lipid-soluble hormones typically bind to intracellular receptors. Receptor activation engages cellular machinery that leads to the response of the cell. The effects of a single molecule of hormone are amplified by the cellular machinery. All about insulin, diabetes mellitus, and the causes and consequences of hypersecretion of insulin.